Well folks, it's already that time. Time to talk about the third and final car of GT7's September patch. Probably the car which most players were a bit meh on the Group 4 Racing Mazda 3. Of course, hot on the heels of the road version, which itself is not bad at all. It's a four-wheel drive platform compared to the front-wheel drive of this one. That didn't surprise me at all. I thought they'd do that much like the Audi TT had as well. The road version has a pretty spicy engine swap. This one, of course, doesn't have that luxury, but the downside of the road car, if you do want to turn it into a racer, is, and unfortunately this goes for special projects as well, no matter how close you can make it to a race car, it still isn't technically one, so you can't use it. So for those who do want to actually race in Group 4, well, it's a pretty natural choice. And I feel like for many players, this will probably take over the duties from the Atenza. In fact, it's kind of weird how the Atenza has been very pushed out <laughs> of the Mazda lineup. They've already been kind of pushed out, or it's already been pushed out by the RX Vision in Group 3 for the most part, and now it's been pushed out of its only safe haven of Group 4 as well. So I, I kind of feel bad for the Atenza in a roundabout kind of way, but this actually really surprised me, because this racing version of the Mazda 3 is actually really good. Visually, it's pretty underwhelming. You know, it's literally exactly what you'd expect. There is nothing special about it visually whatsoever. It's just a racing version of the Mazda 3. But in terms of what it can do, especially in that front wheel drive package, which no longer has the advantage that the road car has in terms of just raw off the line grip, this thing is really good. And in fact, the version that I'm using here is not even tuned. I've done nothing to it whatsoever, even the tires, even the settings, I haven't touched a thing. Just slapped the livery on it, took it out to the new event on Bathurst to give it a run, and it is brilliant. It's so pleasant to use. There's, in fact, so little understeer or oversteer, it's so neutral. The, I mean, the two Civics wish they could corner like this thing, and even if you put them on racing tyres, they still don't corner as well as this one does. And I can already see the comments from people saying, oh, it's the new OP choice. Well, yeah, it probably will be, and it wouldn't surprise me at all. The only thing that would be probably as OP as this would be if we got some kind of GR Corolla racing version, like a rally car or a Group 4, because you know that thing would be extremely OP as well. So what does this thing offer? Because of course, in Group 4, Group 3, all that kind of thing, balance of performance is immediately going to change things around, depending on the arbitrary choices of the track and the event, but at least stock, quote unquote, you're looking at pretty decent numbers, 1200 kilos, 380 horsepower, 635 points. So you could potentially use this as a cash cow, you could get some pretty decent horsepower out of it while still being well under 700 points, given that of course it's already on racing tyres as well. It is of course 350 grand, like all of the other Group 4 cars, in fact I don't think there are any exceptions to that that I can think of, and of course we've already said that it retains the turbo aspiration but it does convert it to front wheel drive instead. Now there's really nothing to overly draw out about this review for the sake of you know getting multiple ads, so we're going to keep it simple. It's a very easy car to review because because contrary to how initially eye-rolling it could seem to have not only yet another Group 4 car that no one was really asking for, but on top of that, just a variation of an existing car where you could probably argue there are some other Group 4 choices that would have been a lot more exciting, bring Bentley back, for example, but it actually is that good. It really is a genuinely nice car to drive. In fact, I would go so far as to say that for somebody who's not huge into Group 4 anyway, it's probably one of my preferred in terms of just its handling alone. It's a really nice car to work with. Is it an obvious choice? Well, of course, it's the latest thing in the category. Obviously, it's going to be OP. It is. It's exactly what you'd expect. There is nothing revolutionary, nothing special about it at all. The only thing of note, aside from what you'd expect, is that you can change the rear wing, which is interesting. You can change it to almost like a Pike's Peak looking wing. There's three different options, if I recall correctly, and you can see some of those in my review for the patch as a whole. But ultimately, yeah, that's about it for what I want to say. It's just a good car, and there's really nothing else to talk about good or bad. It does what it says on the tin, it's a racing version of an already pretty damn good hot hatch, and it looks pretty cool too. And of course, with all three cars wrapped up now for GT7 1.38, you will definitely want to be sticking around over the next couple of weeks, especially the coming week. I'm not exactly sure how my release schedule is going to look, but definitely this coming week, maybe even the week after, because I've got another 
number of videos spaced a few days apart just to give people a chance to watch them all, which you are definitely going to want to pay attention to. Potential new cars, I will also be discussing the GT Sport servers being shut down, and contrary to what you might think, I'm actually not happy about that, and I'm going to talk about why and other things as well. I'm also planning to talk about what I believe, based on the current time frame and our current experiences, what the future trajectory of Gran Turismo probably is going to be, at least in my opinion, and also what I think Kaz's priorities are probably going to be in terms of what we should expect moving forward. I will also be doing an updated, complete engine swap list again. Of course I did that huge one initially and then I've added smaller videos since then, but since the smaller videos are kind of hard for people who are new to the channel to keep up with, you know, part two, part three, etc., I'm going to re-edit it into one big new video again and then we'll start over with the smaller videos for a few months and etc, etc. So stick around for all of that stuff, I'll see you then, and for now, as always, thanks for watching.